Gluteal muscles. This tutorial is going to identify the gluteal muscles, maximus, medius, minimus, and the TFL, including primary actions and innervation. In addition, we're going to use the knowledge of the gluteus medius and minimus to describe how the superior gluteal nerve is clinically tested. All right, so there's our gluteal muscles, baby bear, papa bear, or mama bear, baby bear, maximus, medius, minimus, and then the tensor fascia lata. And so there we've got our gluteus maximus. Gluteal means rump. And this is the region where these gluteal muscles primarily are located. And the gluteus maximus is the biggest. It arises from the ilium as well as the sacrum. And then these muscles are going to go down and insert on two different areas. The gluteal tuberosity, which is this region on the back of the femur, highlighted there in purple. There's a the gluteal tuberosity, as well as to the iliotibial band of fascia, uh, just abbreviated usually as the IT band, which then courses all the way down the thigh, and it stops there at the arrow. But, I mean, the arrow shows that it stops, but it doesn't. It goes all the way down to the tibia. And so in a lateral view, there and shown in gray is this IT band, and it courses down to the proximal part of the tibia on its lateral side. And then... The action of the gluteus medius is hip extension, but when the hip is in a flexed position uh, in this fashion. So there we've got the gluteus maximus from a lateral side. I'm going to put a more simplistic view of the gluteus maximus. And now we're going to flex the hip. When the hip is flexed, now this is where there's the primary biomechanical advantages given to the gluteus maximus. So when this muscle contracts, it extends the hip when the hip is already in a flexed position from here to there. Also notice what happens is there's our ischial tuberosity. That's your sits bone. That's what if you put your hand underneath your own derriere right now, you feel this prominent bony sticky outy that's touching your seat. When you sit, when you actually have your hip in a flexed position, it exposes that ischial tuberosity. So when you extend the hip, notice the ischial tuberosity is now covered by the mass of the gluteus maximus. Gluteus maximus. Okay, gluteus medius. It's the middle one, middle-sized one. It arises on the back of the ilium and inserts down in the greater trochanter. And the greater trochanter is this very prominent uh, bony landmark where the, three, where the two gluteal muscles and all the external hip rotators attach. Greater trochanter. And so in a lateral view, there we see the gluteus medius in green, and it comes down and attaches to the greater trochanter. Okay. Gluteus minimus now. It's the smallest one. There's baby bear. Arises from the back of the ilium and goes down to the greater trochanter of the femur, just like the medius does. And then our tensor fascia lata. This one looks like it's part of the anterior thigh muscles, but it's innervated and it derives from these gluteal muscles. It's innervated by the same muscles as the medius and minimus are. And the uh, tensor fascia lata arises from the front of the ilium and then it inserts on the IT band as well as the gluteus maximus. And that IT band goes all the way down the thigh to the tibia. Shoom. Okay, now let's take a look at the two actions. We're going to put the gluteus medius, minimus, and the tensor fascia lata, often abbreviated as TFL, in the same group because they have two actions, one hip adduction and one stabilization of the pelvis. And so for the hip adduction, there we can see in green, I've just highlighted the medius because it's easiest to draw, but it shows this principle. And this gluteus medius, when it contracts, it pulls the femurs out as in hip ad, uh, pardon me, hip abduction, abduction. There it is, hip abduction. Now, another one is stabilization of the pelvis. So we're going to show this posterior view and then ghost on the uh, hip joint and then show this illustration. Now, watch. What happens if you lift the leg off the ground? Will the pelvis dip or stay stationary? So you lift the leg off the ground and notice now that there's nothing supporting on this left side. You would think that that pelvis would dip because of gravity. But when we see what happens is if you lift the leg off the ground, the pelvis remains level. Why? Well, let's now take a look at this in green, the gluteus medius. Again, this works for the minimus and TFL, but I'm just going to show one picture. 
when we now zoom in, the origin of the gluteus medius for stabilizing the pelvis arises from the greater trochanter. And then think of its insertion on the ilium. And remember that when a muscle contracts, insertion goes towards origin. So if you were to lift the leg off the ground, the pelvis you'd think would dip, but instead what happens is the ilium, con the uh, gluteus medius contracts and pulls the pelvis to stay level in that fashion. Let's do that again. When you lift the leg off the ground, the pelvis remains level because of the contraction of the gluteus medius. We call that stabilization of the pelvis. Now, what is the innervation of these gluteal muscles? Well, the innervation of gluteal muscles arises from the sacral plexus. So there's L4 to S3 spinal cord levels. <coughs> there's our ventral rami, or the spinal nerves coming off. And then there's the sacral plexus. We're going to be focusing on the superior and inferior gluteal nerves. There's our superior gluteal nerves that come from L4, L5, and S1. The motor neuron cell bodies arise in the ventral horn. And then out of the ventral rami, they course into that superior gluteal nerve and innervate these three muscles, the medius, minimus, and TFL. Now, the superior gluteal nerve gets its name because they, this nerve courses above the piriformis, hence superior gluteal nerve. So in a nutshell, superior gluteal nerve comes from the L4 to S1 levels of the spinal cord, innervate the gluteus medius, minimus, and TFL, and course above the piriformis. All right, now on a posterior view of this hip, there's our piriformis, a posterior view of the right hip, and the gluteus maximus has been reflected away. And the superior gluteal nerve comes above the piriformis. And then it sends nerve fibers to innervate the gluteus medius, nerve fibers to innervate the gluteus minimus, and a nerve fiber to innervate the TFL. But I don't have it drawn in here, so I just grade it out. All right, now the inferior gluteal nerve. This nerve um, is going to arise from L5 to S2 levels. The, the motor neuron cell bodies arise in the ventral horn of the spinal cord, come out the ventral rami, and go into the inferior gluteal nerve. And this only innervates one muscle, the gluteus maximus. And so there's our piriformis, and the inferior gluteal nerve gets its name because it exits below the piriformis muscle to go to innervate the gluteus maximus. All right, so in a inferior gluteal nerve is below the piriformis, arises from the L5 to S2 levels, and innervates the gluteus maximus. So here again is this gluteal region on the right side. And there's our piriformis in the inferior gluteal nerve. courses below the piriformis to innervate the gluteus maximus muscle. All right, now how do you test the superior gluteal nerve, that second learning objective? Well, to do that, let's take a look at the same picture again. When you then lift one leg off the ground, the pelvis remains level because of the contraction of the gluteus medius muscle which is innervated by the superior gluteal nerve. Now, what were to happen if we were to have a superior gluteal nerve injury and gray out that muscle because it's no longer functioning and then lift one leg off the ground? Notice the pelvis dips because with an injured, with an injured superior gluteal nerve and that gluteus medius and minimus and TFL muscles cannot contract to then stabilize the pelvis, the pelvis dips on the other side. This is what's known as the Trendelenburg sign. All right, gluteal muscles in a nutshell. And so the gluteus maximus muscle has the following action. It extends the hip when the hip is from in a flexed position and is innervated by the inferior gluteal nerve that comes from the L5 to S2 spinal cord levels. Then we have the gluteus medius, minimus, and TFL, and their action is hip abduction as well as stabilization of the hip. And so if you if they're innervated by the superior gluteal nerve, and if you knock out that superior gluteal nerve, the patient presents with the Trendelenburg sign.